If you can't, if you can only hear my voice, this is James Featherson speaking to you. I will be your worship leader today. Welcome to Mount Zion's virtual, work, virtual worship service. Even though the service is, is virtual, it is not virtual with God. He is always with you, so behave. We will, uh, I want to welcome everyone who is on social media, Facebook, and remind everyone we are being recorded. Won't you have a, um, a word of prayer with me this morning? Let us go to God. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for being with us today. We are on a virtual worship, worship service, but we do know that you are always with us. Father God, give us the patience that we need for all that's going on in this world today. Father God, just help us through all the, all the bad and all the good stuff as well. Father God, be with all of our sick and shut in and all those who have any type of ailment today, all those who are hurting emotionally, spiritually, physically. And Father God, please all, help all of us that are having any type of problems. Father God, we need you, and we welcome you into this service. Thank you for being with us. Put your ever-loving arms around us, and guide us in the direction you would want us to go. We need you, Father. We always need you. Please don't let, it, let us not ever try to get ahead of you. When we do, we know we always falter. Teach us all to continue to follow you. Thank you, Father, for being with us. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. We will now have our scriptural reading from one of our favorite guests and one of our past first men, Billy Cogman. Thank you for being with us. You're on mute, Billy. You're, you're on mute, Billy. All right. There we Everybody go. Everybody can hear me now. Okay. Great morning, great morning, great morning to everyone. Uh, it is always an honor and a privilege to be in the presence of the Mount Zion United Methodist Church family. This morning, I have the honor to uh, provide the scripture coming from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 10, verses 35 through 45. I will be reading from the New Living Translation, which has the, the title of this section, Jesus Teaches About Serving Others. Jesus Teaching About Serving Others. And it reads as thus. Then James and John, the sons of Zebedee, came over and spoke to him. Teacher, they said. We want you to do us a favor. What is your request? He asked. They replied, when you sit on your glorious throne, we want to sit in places of honor next to you, one on your right hand and the other on your left. But Jesus said to them, you don't know what you are asking. Are you able to drink from the bitter cup of suffering I am about to drink? Are you able to be baptized with the baptism of suffering I must be baptized with? Oh yes, they replied, we are able. Then Jesus told them, you will indeed drink from my bitter cup and be baptized with my baptism of suffering but I have no right to say who will sit on my right or my left. 
God has prepared those places for the ones he has chosen. When the 10 other disciples heard what James and John had asked, they were indignant. So Jesus called them together and said, you know that the rulers in this world lord it over other people and officials fought their authority over those under them. But among you, it will be different. Whomever wants to be leader amongst you must be your servant. And whomever wants to be first amongst you must be the slave to everyone else. For the Son of God, Son of Man, came not to be served, but to serve others and to give his life as a ransom for men. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Thanks, Billy, for that wonderful reading of the scripture. As we move forward, I'd like to give a small introduction to our today's speaker. He is a man of God, and you can you, you know that just by talking to him, just by, he doesn't even have to speak, and you know that he's a man of God. His name is, we lovingly call him Dr. Caleb Oates. He is our music director. He's a graduate of my wife's alma mater, Howard oh, University. He is, he is a great man. If he's not a great man yet, he is, he is definitely becoming a great man. He's a very patient man. You know that because he works as a teacher at the high school level, and you have to be very patient at that level. Caleb has taught us a lot. I'm a lot older than him, but he has taught me a lot. Just watching him, he is a very good, good man. And he's, like I said, he's very patient. And he's got a lot of wisdom beyond, well beyond his years. Everyone, I'd like to introduce to you our favorite music director, Dr. Caleb, Caleb Oates. Amen, amen, amen. Bless you, uh, Brother James, for that introduction. And I know that you were certainly paid to say those things. And so um, I'll get to the bottom of that uh, <laughs> later. Uh, but I praise the wonderful name of Jesus on this uh, blessed day, for this is the day that the Lord has made, and we shall rejoice and be glad in it. I don't know about you, but I will bless the Lord at all times, and his praise shall continually be in my mouth. Amen. What a privilege and profound opportunity it is to be before you today, for it is always a joy and a, uh, a pleasure to share an encouraging word. Uh, with this great body of believers, with this distinct family of faith. To Pastor Selena, uh, church leadership members and friends, I say again, thank you for entrusting me with uh, the hearts and minds of those a part of this great fellowship to share with us, save the Lord, on this special Laity Sunday. Indeed, there is a word from the Lord on today. I know the scripture in its entirety has already been offered in our hearing, but for the sake of setting the stage for what the Lord will say for us this morning, allow me to again offer three verses, the 38th and the 43rd and 44th verses of Mark chapter 10, again in our hearing. Verse 38 reads in the New Living Translation, but Jesus said to them, you don't know what you are asking. Are you able to drink from the bitter cup of suffering I am about to drink? Are you able to be baptized with the baptism of suffering I must be baptized with? Jumping down to first, verse 43, Jesus speaks again, among you, it will be different. Whoever wants to be a leader must be a servant. And whoever wants to be first must be the servant of everyone else. For even the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve others and to give his life as a ransom for many. Let us pray. God of grace and God of mercy, we thank you for this day. I ask that you would decrease me 
so that you are heard and you are heard only. Now let the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight. You are our strength and our redeemer. Amen. For the few minutes that are mine, I want to speak from the thought, an attitude fix. An attitude fix. It might get a little hotter here, but just hold on and I promise it'll get, it'll get better. Um, and I say this every time I'm invited back, but keeping uh, in the tradition of the Black church, I'm going to need at least five people to talk back to me today. A amen. Amen. I'm not an amen junkie, but the less y'all talk, the longer I'll stay. Amen. Uh, amen, somebody. Amen. 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 Have you ever made the mistake of sitting in someone's seat in church? <laughs> Ooh, I, amen. I know I might... I might get in trouble, but, I, but I'm going somewhere. I, I promise. I promise. I mean, of course, there are technically no quote unquote assigned seats in church. But, but I mean, the church that that person normally or regularly sits in, the seat that in their minds has their name on it, and in some extreme church settings actually has their name on it. Have you ever assumed that where exactly a person sits? in church on a Sunday morning shouldn't really matter, but then soon found out that it quite literally means war for some people. Amen. And I do mean a full-fledged civil war. Have you ever discovered that for individuals like this, any threat to their customs or patterns, any distress you cause to their comfort zone, they will be upset for the rest of the day, the entire week, and sometimes they'll, they'll cut and roll their eyes at you all year long. Y'all not going to talk back to me today, but, but they'll try their hardest to crucify you and nail you to a cross. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Now, now, I know I'm not, I'm not talking about Mount Zion. I'm not talking about Mount Zion. Amen. Amen. But, but don't you know Amen. that simple situations like this have occurred in churches all over and people have held grudges over the years and have cut people off and have even refused to speak to people, yes, <laughs> over a seat. Amen. Mm. In this respect, it may, in fact, be a blessing that Mount Zion has no parking lot. Some of the greatest tensions and dissensions in church have been initiated in the parking lot. Amen. <laughs> Brothers and sisters, yeah. the battle for parking spots, in case you didn't know, is real. Speak it. Who parked in my spot? Don't they know I park here every Sunday? Who do they think they are? I've been parking here for you. Be surprised at the anger, envy, and rage that some church folk possess, even when it comes to the simplest of things. Well, perhaps you've never experienced or dealt with the hostility surrounding the seat in church or a parking spot, but maybe you yourself have engaged in petty disagreements and distractions that prevent you from focusing on kingdom building and authentic Christian ministry. Sometimes we as Christians lose focus and, and lose sight of the things that truly matter. I have heard arguments about who has the best voice and who should sing the solo, but I've never heard an argument about who would go and witness in the streets in this evil and cold world. I've heard debates about who should bring the potato salad to the cookout, but I've never heard any arguments uh, about who would be the first to welcome a stranger home. No arguments about who would hug them the tightest or who would embrace them the warmest. Ooh, I can't get no amen, help. Amen. And Jesus, uh, in the text this morning, offers us all an attitude fix and reminds and encourages us to keep the main thing the main thing. You're not hearing me this morning. In our, in our text this morning, Jesus is engaged in rich discussion and conversation with his disciples. This entire day, Jesus uh, has been teaching and instructing his disciples, giving them information about how they should move and operate uh, in the world and how exactly they should interact with one another. 
verses 13 through 16, he's given a lesson on how to treat children and youth. Verses 17 through 29, he makes an example out of a rich man revealing that it's not about how much money you have in the bank. No, rather, it's about how much love you have in your heart and how much you're willing to share with your neighbor. Verses 32 through 34, Jesus reminds his disciples of his pending execution, but encouraging encourages them that in three days, he would rise again. And then in verses 35 through 45, our selected text this morning, Jesus gives his disciples an attitude fix. Two of his disciples, James and John, the sons of Zebedee, make a special request. Selfishly, they ask Jesus for a, a special seating assignment. Did y'all read the text this morning? They ask to be seated one to the right and the other to the left of him when he is seated on his eternal and glorious throne. And I believe that Jesus, in his response, in his gentle attitude correction, leaves us with three important points that I want to share with us this morning. First, we are reminded that true discipleship and true Christian fellowship is not about positions. Amen. Let me say that again. True discipleship does not concern itself with one's position. I know that this society has been built on a hierarchical structure and that we have been taught to associate self-worth and value with positions of power and prestige. But this realm of thinking is a dangerous and destructive mindset for the Christian believer. Yes, it is. This selfish and shallow and individualistic ideology does not mesh or gel well with kingdom principles. I know that society has divided us by education levels, divided us by income levels, divided us by race, divided us by class, divided us by gender, divided us by sexual orientation, divided us by religion, divided us by creed, divided us by political parties, by language, by dialect, divided us by standards of beauty, divided us by zip code. And if we're not careful, we as the people of God will bring those same divisions to church. Mm -mm -mm. Yes, if, if we're not careful, we'll fall victim to sec secular separatism and we'll allow the same principles of divisiveness to govern our thinking as it relates to our Christian walk. So before we jump on James and John and before we label their request irrational and immature, we must first consider what we ourselves have prioritized in our own walk with Jesus Christ. Yes. We must consider what things that we have asked for that may, have, that may actually be a distraction to the purpose and plan of God for our lives. We must ask ourselves, have we, in fact, made our positions and or anything tied to them? Have we made them our God? Mm -hmm. But yeah. thanks be unto God that when we get too full of ourselves, when we get too big for our britches and when we try to make things all about us and when we become selfish and self-absorbed and when we forget the true purpose and aim of our lives and when our prayer requests become misaligned and when we begin to crop Jesus out the picture, aren't you glad that God has a way of refocusing us? Aren't you glad that God has a way of realigning us? Aren't you glad that God has a way of performing an attitude fix, a way of reminding us to stay focused on the things that truly matter? It's right there in the text. Jesus replies to them, you don't know what you're asking. I have no right to say who will sit on my left or right. God has prepared those places for the ones he's chosen. In other words, we don't get to pick and choose who sits where. As followers of Jesus Christ, we are reminded again and again to ref 
refrain from superfluous rankings of value. We are instructed to judge not lest we be judged. Jesus time and time again has to remind us that his ways are not our ways and that if we are going to be his children and if we are going to truly follow him, we must get rid of the stinking thinking that says there are big eyes and little U's. Yes, this mentality has penetrated our churches, our families, our schools, our communities, and there needs to be a radi radical, radical, radical attitude fix. I dare somebody to just shout, check my attitude, Jesus. Preach. Some think that because they have white skin, they're better than those with black skin. Some think that because they're rich, they're better than those who are poor. Some think that because they are a, a part of certain organizations or affiliations that they're better than those who are not. But Jesus in our text shows us that Jehovah, that God Almighty has the final say, that at the end of the day, God has a way of leveling the playing field, that God is not impressed by our credentials or by our secular status. That there is no favoritism in the kingdom of God. Yeah, you may have been mama's favorite or you may have been daddy's favorite, but we are all children in the eyes of God. We are all children of the most high God and God loves us all just the same. Is there anybody here who's glad that God is in charge of your destiny? Aren't you glad that God has the keys to the gate? Aren't you glad that your friends aren't in charge of your salvation, that your family is not in charge of your blessings? All you would have to do is make them mad one good time and they'll cut you down and cut you off. But we serve a Ooh, God amen. that looks on our hearts, a God that doesn't use worldly metrics to judge our value, but assigns us all value through the blood of Jesus Christ. Oh, praise is his name. And, and this God wants us to think, act, and operate on this level. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Is there anybody here today who's not ashamed to say that every now and then I need an attitude fix? Amen. 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 The, the, the second thing that Jesus. Amen reveals in his conversation with James and John, and by extension to all of us, is that true discipleship involves testing. On this Lady Sunday, brothers and sisters, as we consider the ways in which lay persons have effectively contributed to kingdom building, let us remember that true discipleship is not about positions, and that moreover, the authenticity of your walk, of your discipleship, will be tested by trials and tribulations. In the text, brothers, and I'm in the text, brothers and sisters, in, in his attitude fixed for James and John, in his response to their seat request, Jesus asked them in verse 38, are you able to drink from this bitter cup of suffering I'm about to drink? Are you able to be baptized with the baptism of suffering I must be baptized with? He then declares to them that you will indeed drink from my bitter cup and be baptized with my baptism of suffering. Church, sometimes God will use the trials and tribulations of life, uncomfortable situations and bitter circumstances to teach us and show us how to be humble. Sometimes the best remedy for arrogance and pride is the school of hard knocks. Y'all don't want to hear me today. Sometimes God will fix our attitudes by taking us through some things that will remind us of our shared humanity, that will remind us that we are no better than anyone else, despite what we may think or feel. He'll take us through some valleys and dark places to show us how to treat some people. He'll take us through some things to show us how to love everybody. Every now and then, God may have to beat your behind to check your attitude. The Bible says, according to Hebrews 12 and 6, that whom the Lord loves, he chastens. In other words, God may use some challenges and some struggles to demonstrate his love, his care, and his concern. And I know that we have been sold a lie and that we have been told that being a follower of Jesus Christ is always a sunny delight, that it's always peaches and cream. But the reality is when we choose God's way, when we choose to follow Jesus, the enemy and the adversary will especially be on our tail. Amen. 
I, I just got to be honest here. When, when we begin to truly prioritize the things that really matter in our kingdom building work here on earth, the devil gets real mad. And every now and then, just like in the story of Job, God will give the enemy permission to throw some things in our path. God will allow some stuff to get in our way in order to test our faith. Sometimes God will make us drink from a bitter cup in order to test our commitment and our authenticity. Sometimes God will baptize us in the fire to see if we're able to stand when the going gets tough. In order to humble us, sometimes God will give us a mountain to climb. But God says, if you follow me, I'll give you the strength to climb it. God says, in fact, if you're my disciple, all you need is the faith, the size of a mustard seed. And you'll actually be able to look at that mountain and say, mountain, get out of my way. Amen, well, God amen. may use a mountain sometimes, but it, he, he might not use a mountain, but he'll use a valley. And if you submit to God, God in the valley, you'll have a change in attitude. You'll end up saying, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil for thou art with me. Is there anybody here that can just begin to praise God for mountains and praise God for valleys and praise God for rough days and praise God for the tears? For it is through these situations, it is through the testing of our faith, it is through the trials and tribulations that we encounter that draw us closer and closer to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. It is through these situations that God teaches us the most valuable lessons in life. Through these moments, our attitudes are checked and we are reminded of our purpose. We are reminded of our mission and our destiny is redefined. Brothers and sisters, I'm done, but as we check our attitudes today, we remember that true discipleship, that is following Jesus Christ, is not about positions. We understand that true discipleship will involve testing. But finally, brothers and sisters, we must never forget that true discipleship requires us to serve. Amen. On this Lady Sunday, let us remember that attending church for an hour or two once a week is not solely what we are called to do as followers of Jesus Christ. In fact, God has used this pandemic to force us all to rethink what church actually is and what it is designed to do. In verse 42 of our text this morning, Jesus now calls all of his disciples together to share his final sentiment, encouraging all of his followers to reform their thinking and attitudes as it relates to being a true and great disciple. He says, you know that the rulers in this world lorded over their people and officials flaunt their authority over those under them. Verse 43, he continues, but among you, it will be different. Whoever wants to be a leader among you must be your servant. And whoever wants to be first among you must be the servant of everyone else. Brothers and sisters, we have uh, been charged by the Most High God with the responsibility of service. How are we serving one another in this world is the question we are constantly asked as believers of Jesus Christ. Yes, it's phenomenal that Mount Zion Church is known as the oldest black church, but we should equally be known as the church that serves, the church that loves, and the church that gives. That's what it's all about, brothers and sisters. On this Laity Sunday, let us remember how there were individuals in the congregation who served the community as teachers in the Sabbath school, teaching young black children, not only the scriptures, but how to read and write. Let us not forget the individuals in our fellowship who drove the church bus every week and picked up dozens of people so that they could be a part of Sunday school and, and church school. Let us not uh, forget those who swept the floors and who swept the stairs, making sure that we had a clean place of worship today. Let us uh, acknowledge those who take their time to volunteer their time and coordinate and serve meals to our homeless and shelter challenge brothers and sisters, those members who volunteer and offer acts of service in other ways in and beyond the walls of our church. 
those of you who take the time to avail yourself to the work of the kingdom. This is what discipleship is, and this is what the Lord requires of us. Amen. You may not be a Martin Luther King, or you may not be an Ella, a, a Ella Baker, but if you humble yourself and allow God to use you, you'll be surprised what God will do in your life. Your name may never be in lights. You may never be featured in Sister uh, Dolores Green's history highlights, but if you do your best in service, God will call you home one day, and he'll say, well done, thy good and faithful servant. True discipleship is not about positions, but following Jesus requires humility and service. And if we're going to change this world as ambassadors of Christ, sometimes an attitude fix is necessary. And thank God for his love, his grace, and his mercy that in his loving kindness and his patience, God works with all of us until we fully resemble the image of Jesus Christ. May our prayer today be that God will give us all a refreshed perspective of discipleship and that indeed we all would have an attitude fix. God bless you. Amen, amen. Can we get a virtual hand clap? That was a beautiful sermon. I don't know about all y'all, but I, 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 what I got out of that is, is put your own selfishness in check you have to be humble enough to know that that some of us are well all of us are selfish and we have to actually understand that we are if you don't god will put it in perspective he will put it in check uh Kaylee, can, can you also lead us in the invitation as well it is our custom um, at this time that we um, uh, would offer Jesus Christ to you, this um, God who is able to perform the attitude fix, this God who gives us an opportunity to come into our full being, realizing that sometimes we must be humble. And so if this is you, if you desire a relationship with the God who changes our hearts and fixes our attitudes and causes us all to work together in service to one another, just repeat this prayer with me. Jesus, I love you. Jesus, I need you. Come into my heart, come into my life, change my mind. Lord, I want to be of service in your kingdom. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 It's our belief that if you pray that prayer and you have believed on the word of Jesus Christ, that God raised Jesus Christ from the dead, that you shall be saved. Amen. Amen. And once again, everyone, I, I hope that wonderful sermon, that beautiful sermon, put everything into perspective for everyone to have that attitude alignment or adjustment, whichever way you want to put it. Now we will have our first selection from our wonderful Mount Zion Gospel Choir, which is also led by Dr. Caleb Hopes.
Amen. 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 Wow, that takes me back. <laughs> Amen. Now, Mount Zion, this is the time that a lot of us really love. It's the offering. It's time to give back. God only asks for 10%. We can afford a lot more than that if we really think about it. Maybe cut back on a Starbucks or, or two. A few other things. We really have to support Mount Zion. There are many ways we can give to the ministry of Mount Zion. You can give today with cash or check. You can go to the Mount Zion website, which is www.mtzionumcdc.org and click on the giving tab. We can also pay through PayPal. Send it to, and I'm going to go slow on this one in case you try to write it down. Go to M-T-Z-I-O-N-U-M-C dot D-C at gmail dot com. And also you can use Cash App. For some of us in my age group you know, that don't know what Cash App is, you can actually pay that from your phone. And that address is cash tag. You actually spell out the word as one word, C-A-S-H-T-A-G, the equal sign, the dollar sign, capital M, lowercase T-Z-I-O-N, uppercase U-M-C-G, lowercase E-O-R-G-E-T-O-W-N. That's cash tag equals dollar sign Mount Zion UMC Georgetown. And that is one of the most convenient ways I can think of because I finally caught up to that, to that uh, technology and that was taught to me by my daughters. Mount Zion, please join me in the offertory prayer. Let us go to the Lord. Holy and loving creator, you are a generous giver. And that's what we strive to be in our tithes and offering. We have been reluctant to let go of our affinity for the things of this world and things we are attached to. We dedicate these offerings to you, the greatest of all givers. In the name of him whose name is above every other name. In Christ we pray, amen. We will now have a moment to reflect back on Mount Zion's history. And this will be shared with us by Ms. Dolores Green. You're on mute, Dolores. You have to go back to, to the first one. Okay. Can you hear me? Yes. I unmute. Thank you. Good morning. Uh, we're celebrating our 205th anniversary uh, this year, and we're saluting the men of Zion. Today, we're highlighting Mr. William H. Audrick Sr., a faithful servant. By 1900, Mount Zion was considered one of the most prosperous churches in Washington. The church was free from debt and membership exceeded 700 people. Mount Zion would continue to grow during the first half of the 20th century. And much of this progress was the result of work performed by dedicated members, such as Mr. William H. Audrick Sr., a faithful servant of the church. For 60 years, Mr. Audrick served as a leader and member of several Mount Zion organizations, including the Financial Committee, the Nominations Committee, Pastoral Relations Committee, Parsonage Committee, and Chair of the Committee on Christian Stewardship. In addition to the above mentioned organizations, 
Mr. Audrey was associated with the Mount Zion Sunday School from 1901 to 1956. He served as a teacher, treasurer, and superintendent and was committed to nurturing and educating Mount Zion's children in the Christian way. In 1956, Mr. Audrick was honored for 55 years of service along with other Sunday school workers who had served 40 years or more. Beginning in 1916, the year of Mount Zion's 100th anniversary, Mr. Audrick began service as a member of the Board of Trustees. By the time of his retirement in 1956, he had served on the board for 40 years. In 1938, Mr. Audrick assumed the position of lay leader and served in that capacity for 21 years. He defined the position of lay leader as a liaison officer between the pastor and the congregation who interpreted the program of Methodism in terms that lay people could grasp. As lay leader, he also devoted much of his time visiting Mount Zion sick and shut in. Mr. Audrick was a lifelong member of Mount Zion and one of its most faithful servants. Mr. William H. Audrick Sr. Amen, amen. Thank you so much for sharing that with us. Uh, our historian, um, Dolores Green has uh, shared and we, and we are so blessed that you um, found some information about one of our lay people back in our history, because we have a lot about the clergy people, but that was just so perfect for Lady Sunday. And I just wanna, y'all, I just wanna praise God for that word that came forth today from God's servant, uh, Caleb. <laughs> yes, praise God, an attitude fix. That was beautiful. Thank you so much for that. So um, at this time, we just wanna take a moment and appreciate all of the laity. Um, I want to give a special shout out to our lay leader of today, um, Sherelle Stagg, and uh, her efforts to pull this whole Laity Sunday together. She she organized it and got Caleb on board and got James on board and got Delora and got everybody together and uh, got Brother Billy on board. So thank you, Sherelle, for your leadership at Mount Zion. And I want to thank James for... Um, for, for being such a lively and engaged worship leader and for uh, leading us to into uh, the place of praise that we need to be in. Thank you so much um, and everybody. But now I just wanna take a moment to appreciate all of um, all lay ministers because you know we're all called into the ministry. We're all called into the ministry in some way. It might not be ordained ministry, but we're all called. And so I just wanna share this uh, short video and then we'll have a prayer. Administrative leadership team, We've got Bible study participants, the building and grant writing team, We've got the choir, the music ministry, finance team, lay servants, the media team, the prayer team. Saturday Supper Volunteers and Coordinator, the SPRC team, Sunday School leaders and participants, the trustees, the virtual core team, the worship participants, worship leaders and scripture readers, worship planning team, our Zoom co-hosts, and unofficial ministries that go on as well, like the cleanup crew who organize our balcony, and the cards and calls that people just give on the spur of the moment as God blesses them and God leads them. God bless you, Mount Zion, lay servants. Amen. Let's, let us pray. God, we thank you for so many people who uh, have been engaged at Mount Zion over 
these 205 years and continue on. We thank you for the lay servants, the lay servants and the lay people who are currently um, serving in ministry at Mount Zion and doing all that we can, especially in these um, challenging times. We pray, oh God, for replenishment of your servants. We pray for um, joy in service. We pray for faithful and fruitful and fulfilling ministry by the power of your Holy Spirit to continue. And it's in Christ's name that we pray. Amen. Amen. So at this time, uh, before we go to our announcements and, and, and uh, prayer requests, I would like to ask if there are any people visiting with us today for the first time. Or do we have any first time visitors with us today? You could just raise your virtual hand or say hello. If you're on the phone, you have to hit star six to say hello. All right. Well, it looks like we are we are here at home together this this morning in your little home and also at home together virtually <laughs> at our church home. So we praise God for that. We praise God for that. Um, I would also like for us to now just share a couple of the announcements. Hopefully you've read your e-blast that came out, that comes out during the week. Um, but I just want to review them here in case you hadn't. Or for those who are um, who are here and visiting and they might not want have wanted to say so. <laughs> and those who hear us on uh, Facebook. Okay, so again, today is Lady Sunday. Well, it's our, our day that we're celebrating Lady Sunday here. Serving God through serving others. <laughs> Thank you for worshiping with us. And uh, this is a special announcement. We just found out this very week that Mount Zion has been selected for the National Fund for Sacred Places. <laughs> so let's just give God a hand, a hand clap of praise for the marvelous work um, that God did in and through the team, the building and grants writing team. This is a very prestigious award, you know, um, over 300 uh, entries came in nationwide um, to the National Fund, to the National Historic Trust. And we are one of 15 who are blessed to be selected to go into the program. So um, we will be getting a grant of $100,000 and we'll match that with our $100,000 of fundraising over the next 18 months. And so um, I'm very proud and excited to announce that and thankful to God. Let's go to the next one. So this week, um, tomorrow, Tuesday and Wednesday is our annual uh, conference for the Baltimore Washington Conference. This is um, our holy conferencing for the year where we get together and we do our voting. We do what the business of the annual conference. So it's also it's usually live streamed and it will be live streamed this year on the conference's website if you want to see it, um, bwcumc.org. Uh, we sent in a video of our choir, so hopefully they'll be playing our choir's video in there at some point during the worship services. Let's go to the next one. Our organist, Trey, is going to be in concert on November 10th at 7.30 at St. Thomas Parish in DC. And there'll also be a conversation about uh, Ray. So, there's the flyer you have to register you don't the tickets are free but you have to register um so that they will know who is coming and we want to go and support trey in this wonderful effort you can go to the um to our mount zion female unit band society website that's our cemetery's website to to see the information to register and click on the registration link so mark your calendars okay we have a candy captain. Yay! Shanita Stagg has agreed to be our uh, to lead us in this effort. Um, so we're looking for people to um, donate candy to be at the event to give out candy. It's going to be a, on Sunday, October 31st, um, as we prepare for All Hallows Eve. And then on Sunday, November 7th, we are going to celebrate Holy Communion together. So hopefully you've been able to pick up one of those little cups or somebody has dropped one to you. They are there um, sitting in the church in the window when you first come in and uh, you can pick one up there. 
The invitation challenge continues on because we want to invite people to come and see our docudrama about the church and the church's history that's going to be in February. And so here's where we are on the scoreboard. Um, Karen Wheeler still in the lead with five. I added one more point to the board. I'm very proud. <laughs> and then uh, Janet came onto the board with a two pointer and Eben with three points. So now we are up to 14. Praise God. We just got to get to 100 by January 1st. So talk it up with your friends, people you meet. They might be interested in coming. Um, two of our other congregations are doing some work. Uh, Dumbarton is doing a tour of stained glass windows in Georgetown. And Wood is asking if anybody from Mount Zion would uh, collaborate with them on um, taking people through our windows. Uh, Foundry is also doing a Caring Congregations retreat and it's going to be October 30th. So, but you do have to register and uh, the registration link was in your e-blast. Our anti-racist mission book club is gonna be beginning in 2022. So we're very, very excited about this. Um, and we'll be working with uh, Mahogany Books on that. Worship leaders and scripture readers, again, this is a great way to participate and to do that service of a disciple that we were talking about this morning is to just read scripture for us or be a worship leader. Contact Jack if you are able to sign up for that. Planned giving, you can leave a legacy um, to continue the missions and ministry of Mount Zion for another 200 years, we pray. Um, we have information about that at the church. And you can help us when you are shopping through Amazon. It doesn't cost you anything extra by using the Amazon Smiles program, and the information is there. You can contact us on social media, on all those platforms, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, and TikTok. And there's uh, how you can contact us directly at the church. And so now is the time I'm going to ask our servant, Brother Caleb, to lead us in a time of prayer requests and praise reports. Again, my praise report is that, um, you know, after almost a year of working on that project for the Sacred Places, Mount Zion has been selected. So I'm just so grateful to God and thankful for all the prayers that went up. So that's my praise report of the Sacred Places grant i also would like to lift up i know a brother billy had to go off because he um because his son james was preaching live there so he had to he had to leave us early and go into that other service um but i he had mentioned that his brother um to pray for his brother in phoenix um so brother billy cogman's brother who's in phoenix just lift him up in prayer He, su he suffered a stroke. Are there other prayer requests or praise reports you want to share? Morning, Mount Zion. I, uh, I shared uh, probably about a month ago that my uncle Wallace Richardson in Ohio um, had had some issues and he was in the hospital. He is now in a rehab center and he's actually doing better. He actually even spoke to my mother on the phone this week. So I just want you to just keep him in prayer. He's getting better so we can just bring him home. Amen, amen. Are there others, uh, praise reports, prayer requests? We know that God is in the blessing business and that uh, we're gifted with this opportunity to share and to encourage uh, one another in this time. Brother John? I, I'd just like to thank uh, God for bringing my daughter-in-law, Lorene, home from Texas after two months down there working with the COVID situation. Uh, she got back home safely and uh, uh, even had the opportunity to sneak into town and go to her son's uh, football team uh, game and surprise him there. So God bless that she's back. Amen. Amen. 
Hey, look, this is Robin. I want to, us to lift up Shirley Gordon, um, who um, was in the hospital um, and was supposed to get out. I'm not sure if she returned home yesterday or not um, this weekend, but I, I, I want us to keep her lifted up. We want to keep Madeline Queen lifted up. Catherine Bowman lifted up in prayer. And I want to give God thanks for Madeline Queen because even though that God is continuing to move and heal her body from the, she was able to go from the hospital to the nurse, um, to the rehab. Um, she joined us on the prayer line for, for the last two prayer meetings. So I give God thanks for that. Amen. Amen. Praise God for that. Amen. Are there others? Let us pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. God, we pray to you knowing that you are God and that you are God all by yourself. God, but we pray giving you thanks and praise and Gratitude for all that you have done in our lives and all that you continue to do. We praise you, God, for our sister, Lorraine, who you have brought home, who you have protected, who you have kept safe, even in the midst of a global pandemic. God, we praise you for our uncle, brother Wallace Richardson, who you have healed, who you continue to reveal yourself to, who you, oh God, have encouraged to know that you are still working miracles. God, we pray with thanksgiving that you have, oh God, given us a blessing, that you have given us what we have prayed for, that you have, oh God, blessed us to be the recipient of this sacred places grant, that you, oh God, have been the rewarder of those of us who have diligently sought you. And so we got, God, we continue to pray that we would be wise stewards over the resources that you have given us, over the blessings that you have bestowed upon us. God, we continue to pray for the brother of Mr. Billy Cogman. We pray for a Sister Shirley Gordon. We pray for Sister Madeline Queen. We pray for Sister Catherine Bowman that you would continue to work your power in their bodies. God, we know that you are a healer and you said that by your stripes, we are healed. And so we claim healing and we claim victory right now in the mighty name of Jesus, that you would touch all of these individuals from the top of their heads to the soles of their feet, that they may come to know your full power at work on the inside of them. God, we thank you for their witness. We thank you for their testimony. We thank you for how you have used them God, to show us what it means to be your disciple. God, we pray that we would ask for an attitude fix. God, we pray that you would come into our hearts and come into our minds and give us a reformed attitude, a reformed perspective, knowing that, oh God, it's not about positions, knowing, oh God, that sometimes we will be tested and tried, knowing that sometimes, oh God, as your followers, that we will have to serve, that you have a way, oh God, of humbling us and letting us know that we're all your children. And so, God, we pray for all of us throughout this week that you would continue to speak to our hearts. God, we thank you for forgiving us of our sins. We thank you for not leaving us or forsaking us, but using us and choosing us each and every day. God, we pray that as we continue to grow and glow in your kingdom, that you would continue, oh God, to keep us in your perfect way and in your perfect plan. This is our prayer in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Mount Zion. Amen. We will now be blessed once again from our great gospel choir.
Amen, amen, amen. Wow. I okay. can never hear that song enough times. <laughs> go ahead, Pastor. I was going to say, before we go to benediction, I forgot to announce that tour team, yes, we're coming back and we're meeting in the main room back at 11. Uh, let's meet at 1130 since it's already after 11 now. Okay. Dr. Oates, we prophetically call you that. Would you like to bring us to the benediction and then we'll go to breakout rooms? Amen. Let us prepare to receive the benediction. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord bless you and make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and grant you peace. Go for it, knowing that God is in control. Amen. Amen. See you guys in the breakout room. <laughs>